celebrities are always followed closely by the media, with everyone following their every move. But what happened before their fame isn't something that has been brought to the general public's attention too often. That makes for some untold stories that we would never imagine to be true. The fact of the matter is, some people were simply destined for greatness since day one. Only a select few people can say that they're a nationally known celebrity and a dominant high school athlete. But some of those celebrities are ones that have gotten so caught up in their new careers that we would never expect to hear what they were doing before their fame. So in today's video, I'm going to be presenting to you guys 10 celebrities who you never would have guessed dominated as a high school athlete. You got, you got the arm. I said you certainly have the desire to be a great pro football player. Not only was the star of Duck Dynasty a great football player, at one point in time he was the starting quarterback over Hall of Famer and Steelers legend Terry Bradshaw. Phil Robertson played football at Louisiana Tech University and apparently could throw the ball up to 70 yards. He had a good arm. I mean, that booger could chuck that football. I could hear that thing coming through the air like it was a teal. It was zipping. He always had a passion for the outdoors and would rarely show up to classes because he was too caught up with hunting. Due to football not being his main passion, he dropped out after his junior year, which freed up Terry Bradshaw to start taking snaps. While Phil has dedicated his life to hunting ducks nowadays, he was also throwing ducks back in college. During his three years at Louisiana Tech, he threw for 12 touchdowns to 34 interceptions. You better D up, Jake. The only connection some of you may have from Denzel in basketball is when he got bullied by Ray Allen in He Got Game, but he was actually a decent hooper back in his days. After being a dominant high school player and one of the better players in the district, he walked on to Fordham University and played for the legendary basketball coach PJ Carlissimo. Maybe Denzel got some of his self-discipline and motivation from the demands of his grueling basketball practices. Every other day, you had to run 20 suicides. Everyone had to hit all the lines in under 30 seconds, and you had a 30 second break in between, and then you got on the line. Denzel didn't get a whole lot of playing time on the court and had a really funky jump shot. But when he tried out with 90 other people to make the team, he was considered because of his terrific hustle and defense. When Carlissimo was asked about the interactions they've had after Denzel became a famous actor, he said that the success has not changed Denzel one bit. The reason why Terry Crews looks like a linebacker in the NFL is because he actually was. He earned a full ride scholarship to play at Central Michigan University and was drafted in the 11th round of the 1991 NFL Draft by the LA Rams. He's one of the few celebrities in today's world that actually played professional sports but didn't gain any of his fame or notoriety because of it. While it should be viewed as an accomplishment in itself to have suited up in an NFL game, he didn't have a pleasant experience when he played. He only recorded a total of three tackles in his short three-year career. And every time he's asked about his memories of playing in the league, he isn't very fond of it. First of all, you're all working together. You're all trying to get to the same goal. Why do you have to do it like that? And, you know, I, t I tend to question a lot of that that went on in the NFL. And, and I, I'm out to change a lot of it. I, I'm out to tell it, you know what I mean? I'm out to tell the real story and the real thing that went down. Your image of Ryan Seacrest is going to completely change after hearing this. Not only was he a football player, he was one of the best players on his team and would quote, knock the crap out of people. Ryan attended Dunwoody High School out of Georgia, which was a state powerhouse back in his day. Growing up, Ryan says that he was a little overweight and started his football career by playing center, guard, and linebacker. By the time he grew into his body his junior year of high school, he moved to strong safety and was one of the leading forces for his team to make the state championship. Ryan Seacrest used to light kids up back in the day. So I actually grew up playing football and I, I didn't have a lot of technique or finesse or skill, so I would just try and 
as the coach says, just trying to stick them, you know. So that was that. That's about all I could do or tried to do on the field. Yeah, watch. What you got? Look how pretty it looks. Just look how pretty it looks. According to his former teammates, 2 Chains was the original Kyrie Irving. All the fancy moves in the street ball moves like they're doing now, he was doing that 17 years ago. He'd throw it out and it would come back to you like it was on a yo-yo. We just thought it was so smooth. 2 Chains was even recruited to play at the University of Memphis and was considered as a potential replacement for former NBA superstar Penny Hardaway. He didn't quite live up to his potential, but still went to Alabama State and played for one season. Immediately following that year is when he started pursuing his rap career. Before Dr. Phil was the most famous psychologist in the world, he was a 6'4 middle linebacker for the University of Tulsa. He had a couple of really interesting stories about his playing days. I spent a lot of time in that stadium and not on the field. I've been in every seat, I've been on every row of that stadium a hundred times, let me tell you for sure. To get in shape during the offseason, Dr. Phil used to run up and down the stadium at 5 in the morning by himself. Not only that, he was a part of one of the biggest blowouts in college football history. On November 23, 1968, Tulsa got beat by the University of Houston 100-6. This seems to be one of the more embarrassing moments that an athlete could be known for, but Dr. Phil states that he had nothing to do with a blowout loss. We all had the Hong Kong flu, and so hardly anybody played in the game, including me. The guy that took the snaps as quarterback hadn't taken a snap since the seventh grade. <laughs> Out of Compton High School in Compton, California, the game had to earn all the respect he was given on the court. He played with and against future NBA stars Baron Davis, Tyson Chandler, Gilbert Arenas, and Tayshaun Prince. In a district that was full of Division I college talent, he averaged 15 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. There was a rumor swirling around that the game earned a scholarship from Washington State University but was kicked off the team after a semester for being caught with drugs. However, when Washington State was asked about his enrollment at the school, they denied that he ever attended. Either way, the famous rapper is still playing basketball today. Nowadays, you can find him hooping in the Drew League, a competitive adult league that features former pros. Joel McHale definitely doesn't have the looks of a tight end. He walked onto the University of Washington football team in 1992 and wasn't all that bad of a player. He was originally recruited to UW to be on the rowing team. During his freshman year, he got in a fight with one of the members and was kicked off the team. So he decided to walk onto the football team and was constantly a scout team tight end to help the defense prepare for their upcoming games. He never suited up in a game, but was known as a really tough guy in practice and would always get up if he was leveled by the starting defense. He does have some athletic ability and beefed up pretty quickly. He didn't have any memorable hits or anything like that, but he was good enough to not be remembered for how bad he was. Well, welcome to the vault. Are you ready? Burt Reynolds was on his way to becoming a legitimate prospect in the NFL draft. He received a full ride scholarship to play at Florida State and was one of their most promising young players. But after he sustained a knee injury in the first game of his sophomore season, followed by getting in a car accident in which he lost his spleen, his football career ended. Burt's athletic background led him to the lead role in a few different Hollywood sports movies, most notably the original version of The Longest Yard. Throughout his time in college and acting career, he stayed in touch with his former roommate at Florida State and legendary college football broadcaster Lee Corso. Before I wrap up today's video, I'd like to pay my respects to Kobe Bryant. During my childhood, Kobe was in the middle of his prime and undoubtedly the most influential athlete for my generation growing up. 
But more importantly, he was an amazing family man and someone who laid a great foundation for his family for years to come. Despite this loss, we all know how Mamba would want everyone to move forward. And that's not to mourn, but to use it as motivation to strive to be as hard of a worker and as good of a man as he was. So move forward with your passion with that Mamba mentality and we can all say that we made Kobe proud. I feel that it's my responsibility as a sports enthusiast with the small platform that I have to express how I feel about someone who had as big of an impact as Kobe. May Kobe and his daughter Gianna rest in peace and my message to you guys is to move forward and approach your passion with that Mamba mentality. I really appreciate everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.